It's about that time of day again. You know what time of day it is, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, we do our very unique morning prep for crude oil futures. We're going from the screen to the floor. My name is Joseph James. I'm from schooloftrade.com. I'm here with my good friend Marty Errico from tradersaudio.com, and we're going to be able to provide you with a very unique morning prep this morning. I'm in a home office here in Los Angeles. I'm looking at my computer screens, and I'm going to be giving you guys a technical approach to trading crude oil this morning. I'll use a top-down approach, beginning with weeklies and dailies, moving all the way down to minute charts so we can anticipate what happened at the open. If you, if you watch this broadcast regularly, you may have noticed this week we actually called every single level this week. Uh, it was almost a perfect week, especially yesterday, closing at the right closing at the weekly highs yesterday afternoon. What a great week we've had so far. My job this morning is to anticipate direction at the open so we can look for high percentage trades starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. We all know crude oil has a mind of its own sometimes, so I'm going to anticipate the first few hours of the morning. I will be constantly updating my analysis throughout the entire day, and we do that in our live trade room Monday through Friday starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Once I'm done with you guys, I'll toss you over to Marty Erico. Marty's down on the NYMEX floor. He's braving the elements in New York City. We go across the country over to New York, and we're going to hear from Marty regarding some trading floor or some pit analysis, which I think to be very, very useful. Without any further delay, let's jump into some charts. I'm going to start first the weekly chart this morning. I don't usually jump into weeklies except for a few times a week. Weekly charts, guys, don't forget, kiddos. I'm not going to use weekly charts. I'm not going to use daily charts to trade with. I'm going to use these charts to set the stage, to tell me a story. And the first thing we see here on this weekly chart is the price wedge. We can see that a mile away. That's nothing new. We've been watching that for weeks. We zoom in now on the price wedge. And what do we specifically see is happening within this wedge? Well, we can see here that we have this support level here at 91.96. This, of course, has held. The big candlestick wick that we see coming off this weekly candle tells us that sellers tried, but these sellers were rejected. Now, we talk about price rejection in our, in our training sessions all the time. Price rejection is a very important term because when prices are rejected, there's a reason for it. Usually, it happens to uh, uh, some we aren't aware of, right? Normally, day traders don't know everything, and we encourage our students at School of Trade to resist the temptation to think why. We don't really care why. We care when and we care where. So when did it occur? Where did it occur? Who cares about why? The time that I'll spend thinking about why it happened, I'll miss the trading opportunity. So don't worry too much about why. All we know right now is, is we tested that 91.96. We tested the highs of this price wedge. And what does the meat of the candlestick tell us? We're right in the middle of the weekly's range with a slightly bearish tone to it, right? This weekly chart tells me that price exploration to the downside, rejected. Price exploration to the upside, well, never really made it. We never made it through to new higher highs here. So we have weakness at the buy side. We have weakness at the sell side. Does this sound like a broken record? It should. We've been talking about two-sided trading here for, boy, about two weeks straight now. Remember, it's insane to be trending this or, or, or trading this as a trend when it's sideways or when it's two-sided trading. One of the biggest mistakes we make as traders is trying to make the market fit into our trading strategy. We have to have ways to capitalize in two-sided markets. Crude oil is a classic two-sided market these days, and that's fine with us because we will use specific trade setups to capitalize on sideways ranges. Now, the weekly chart just whets the appetite. I'll tell you, the daily chart really, I think, has the most amount of clues in it. And this is where I'm going to make my first, we'll call it a assumption, right? It's a kind of a guess and an assumption. Maybe it's an educated, educated assumption, educated guess. Let's take a look at what happened in the daily. Now, again, the weekly chart shows us this big wedge. The weekly chart tells us we're in the middle of this range. So we know what we're dealing with here. But look at the candlesticks that make up the daily chart. And this was talked, we, we spoke about this last night in our newsletter, uh, sent out to all of our members, uh, even sent out to our trial members, posted last night. So what do we see here? Well, do you remember this week how we went up, 
right? Remember, we broke out this week. The first day this week, it was rocket fuel, right to the right, right to the highs, 95, 25. Then, remember what happened? We had this gap down, right? This big gap down. We gapped down yesterday. We test the 91.66, and look at that green candle. That green candle from yesterday. There it is, right there. That green candle from yesterday. What is it telling me? It says the sellers. Right, the sellers couldn't keep the job going. Remember, we gapped down. We started high, moved lower. We gapped down, opened up, gapped down. We filled that gap yesterday morning, late morning, early afternoon, and now we can see here. I would assume price will continue to keep rising. Now, I'll be honest. This red candlestick threw a little bit of sawdust in the mix here today. That's going to slow me down just a little bit. That causes some concern. I personally was expecting to see this as a green bullish candle this morning. But this bearish candle does throw fuel on that two-sided fire, right? It really does. So we see here that if I had to guess, if somebody put a gun to my head and said, all right, choose a direction, Joe, I would say we are going to be bullish moving higher this morning. Now, I'm just a lonely old day trader. I can't, I can't move the market myself, so I'll have to trade what I see. But the pattern on the daily chart tells me that if we can slip up here to the downside, we're probably going to see price scoot up there to 95 even, 95.25, right, after shaking off those sellers. If I'm completely wrong, we've got to be careful because I've got some serious support here coming in at 91.97, 91.66. So we are going to treat this as a two-sided trading day, buying the lows being the high percentage trade. Okay, makes sense? Two-sided trading, buy the lows and sell the highs of the short-term range will be the high percentage trading this morning. However, if I had to choose what direction would be the higher percentage, I personally would choose the long side. Now, I know it's difficult with this big red daily candle right now to say that, but let's dig in a little bit further. Let's take a look at a four-hour. A four-hour chart gives us a bunch more clues. Now, the first thing I notice in this four-hour chart is this bearish channel, right? This bearish channel has been forming here for quite some time, since the beginning of this month, right? So you go all the way back to Cinco de Mayo, and you can see this bear channel starts developing. What does a bear channel tell me? Lower lows, lower highs. More importantly, a bear channel tells me the directional bias or the direction that the highest percentage trades will occur. And what do we know? We know that selling at the highs will always be a, a very high percentage trade for a bear channel. So we already know, based upon what we see here today, if we happen to get up to that high of that channel, remember how I said earlier, looking bullish, there's that 9509. 95.25 was the level we found on the daily chart. So 95 even, 95.25, that will definitely be a line on our radar this morning because, as we said earlier, we may get this price to bounce off 91.76. I will be looking for a buy, profit target all the way back up at 95.09, and then I will look to sell it right back down. Two-sided trading, looks like it's going to work out as well in this four-hour chart. We have a double top overhead. This double top tells me a buying opportunity. If you don't believe me, just wait and see. Double top support we have at 91.76 and 90.07. This double top support is extremely important because you can see it outlines this tremendous buy zone, 91.71, 91.41. As you can see, no wonder these sellers right, have been smacked around a little bit at these lows. Big wicks. Big wicks, big wicks on this four-hour chart. What do big wicks tell us? Price rejection. I can see big wicks at those lows. So again, this tells me here, I will now look to short-term, selling short, selling retracements, taking profit at 91.76. I will be looking for a price reversal pattern to buy 91.76, taking profit on the way up at the high of the channel. At the high of the channel, depending on where we are, we may see price bounce off the high of the channel, or what happens quite often is price will go through the high of the channel, it'll consolidate, and then collapse. I will be looking for that high percentage trade at the highs of that bear channel, and I will be looking to buy here at 91.76.
will be a little bit risky here to sell short below this 9282. We know that right now we're technically in the middle of the range. So just be careful where we are right now. This is a little bit of a tough spot right now. I would I would not recommend a new trader or somebody who might be down in the week. If you got some house money to play with, right, then by all means take it or leave it. But I would be careful trading right at this moment. I would wait to buy that 9176. I would wait to sell that 9509. All righty, those are our anchor charts. I'm not done with you yet. Let's keep going. How about a 60 minute? Let's go over to a 60-minute chart here. We'll do a 60-minute, we'll do a 15-minute, and we'll wrap it up and toss it back over to Marty at the NYMEX Exchange. What are we seeing here in a 60-minute chart? 60-minute chart shows us, again, there's that big, big buy zone below us. Boy, we are really stuck right here, aren't we? Now, we have a very simple rule, and this is something that, we, that takes a little bit of time to develop this, this, uh, this habit. Repeat after me. If I can't see it, I can't trade it. What do I mean by that? Look at the range that we're in. If I can't see a pattern forming inside this little area here, how on earth am I going to be able to trade it? I can't. So we see here there's one level below me at 92.82. There's one level above me, 93.44. There's a 93.79. Sheesh. There is resistance overhead. There is support below. This this hourly chart just confirms exactly what we talked about on the four hour. Be careful where we are right now. If you want an easy way to dig yourself into an early hole on Friday morning, and we know today is the last day of the month, the last day of the week, this will be a concern for us today, being the condition of the, of the day of the week, the week of the month, the month of the year, end of the week, end of the month. We know price is going to be a little bit sloppy this morning, so be careful in this area here. I will look, again, like I said, higher risk selling short, but I'm looking to be a buyer here. I'm looking to be a buyer here as this price goes lower, looking for that reversal to buy it back up. I will have to use these trend lines as short-term targets. Remember, 95 even was that level we looked for on the four-hour chart. So couldn't you see here taking a portion of profit off at this trend line, portion of profit off at that 95 even trend line, and then again, selling it short and bringing it right back down in. This all really makes quite a bit of sense. Now we have the plan for today. The plan today is be careful where we are right now. The plan today is to buy that 90, uh, 92-ish down to 91.65 area. We know we've got a big buy zone down there. We know we've got that four-hour zone down here. All right, and again, that 95 keeps popping up for a great selling opportunity if we can get down, if we can get up there. Now, let's... let's Let's put the final nails in the coffin here. Let's go to the five-minute chart. The five-minute chart, boy, once again here, this confirms for us exactly what we saw earlier. Be careful where we are right now. I can see this a mile away, a narrow trading range coming out of London. This narrow range out of London tells me we've still got plenty of room to go or, right, remember, a narrow trading range coming out of London tells us one of two things. The first thing is, is this price may have some legs to it. We might be just getting started. So if the London session is very narrow, I'm expecting price to keep going lower. I'm expecting price to keep going higher. That's the first scenario. Scenario two, which is more along the lines of what I think we're going to see this morning, is a consolidated, two-sided market personality. So a narrow range tells us either A, we're just getting started, or B, you might want to right. You might want to look for those fake out breakouts. You might want to look to buy the lows and sell the highs. This five minute chart shows me a price wedge, lower highs, higher lows, a narrow London trading range. It shows me a reversal zone below me, a reversal zone above me. I think this lines up almost perfectly with what we just saw on the 60 minute, the 240 minute, the daily chart. We continue to see this two-sided trading environment. We continue to see this two-sided clues we get. So with that said now, how do I trade this, Joe? Now here are our VI, this is our VIP, our very important price levels. As you can see here, moving up, we've got 93.27. We have the reversal zone overhead. We have today's open, and we have a buyer's target. Look at all the resistance overhead. We've got the weekly open. The London reversal, 
We've got the buyer's target in today's open. This is a tremendous amount of resistance that we have overhead. So we can only assume that if we got those bulls in charge, we are going to look for that price to reverse and sell it right back down in. Now remember, we have two choices. If we get a price, as price is rising, I'm going to buy today's lows, which means technically in the short term, I am bullish. So I am bullish crude oil right now at this time in the short term. I will take profit off at the top of the wedge. I will take profit off at the top of the range. If we keep going higher, I will look for a five-minute candle closing above 93.56 in order to start buying. However, we have to be aware all of this resistance overhead really, really makes me suspicious of trying to force those trades long above 93.56. If you recall what we spoke about yesterday, yesterday morning my exact words were, rather than trying to predict which one of these will be a breakout, wait for price to get up into that reversal zone and then collapse. Once it collapses, now you've got the buyers being beat by the sellers and we can of course get a much easier trading opportunity from it. So I am bullish in the short term, selling those highs and again as price goes higher I'm going to expect it to eventually here collapse whether it be in the reversal zone itself, I'll be selling highs, or if it breaks through that reversal zone, I'll be looking for it for a short as it goes. Additional levels overhead here, we can see we got plenty of wide open spaces to get up to that 95. So if we do get up above that 9406, now I've got that reason to start buying because now we're going to most likely get up to that 9449. And remember, 95 even was where we, th was where we thought we'd get that big price reversal. Okay, so the lines I need to be careful with today, the levels I need to be aware of this morning, if I'm going to be a buyer, I am bullish right now, I'm looking above 93.56, I'm looking above 94.06. Unfortunately, that's the only place where we have those wide open spaces that we need to get those high percentage trades. And don't forget, 95 even is an excellent level today for a target and an excellent spot to look for a price reversal as we wrap up this week and this month. Looking below us here this morning, we can see here quite a bit of support below us as well. Now, clearly, we have a lot more wide open space to the downside. As price moves lower, I will be, I will be bullish coming out of that reversal zone. I will buy the lows of that reversal zone. If we close below 92.49, now we know the sellers are back in control. I will continue to sell short here down to 92.25. Please notice we have the prior week low of the week right here. 92.21 is this week's or the prior week's low. As you can imagine, that will be a tremendous buy zone. We also have symmetry. A to B, B to C, C to D. We have symmetry now. And symmetry support means absolutely we're going to be buying it there as well. So we have buying opportunities right now here on crude oil, short term selling opportunities below 92.49, but I am going to be buying this symmetry buy zone. We've got the London reversal, the previous week's lows. We have the symmetry support. That's enough for me to look to buy. If I happen to be wrong, if we blow right through it, that's going to be a huge sign the bears are in charge, and we will be headed towards yesterday's low, yesterday's low here at 91.65, and that will be a final profit target for the sellers. We have a very big variable in this 92.25 area. I will be looking for price to bounce and go back higher. If it does push lower, I assume those bears are in full control and will head down to 91.65. Guys, that's all you got for me today. I'll make sure these, these charts are updated for our blog here so you guys are ready for 8 a.m. Eastern time. I've taken up enough of your time here. Marty, what are you seeing on your end? Thank you so much for coming out and joining us here today. Marty. Erico, everybody, from Traders Audio, he's down in the NYMEX exchange, and he's going to give us a very unique look here from what he's seeing on the trading floor. All right, thank you very much, JJ. Well, thank God you talked about $94 even okay, so that's all I can say. Um, basically, what we've been seeing is sideways type trade, and that's what we should expect today, sideways to slightly bullish. So we're bullish for a couple reasons. We see shorts get absolutely squeezed yesterday with volatility coming in and open interest decreasing big time. So that's very bullish for us right now on a you know shorter time frame perspective in the next few hours in the next couple trading days. So 
right now we're looking at that $94 level. Once we can break above that, 95 evens in the question. All the options guys are dying for that for the weekly options to expire near 95 evens. So I agree with you. We're sideways to slightly bullish for today. So as I mentioned, shorts were squeezed yesterday. Open interest falls about 10,000 contracts here. I got 299,465. Again, that's 299,465. That's bullish here on our open interest vol, like I mentioned here, comes in just a bit, 23% in the implied volatility. Uh, the vol index also trades about 23 and a quarter percent. Crude right now trading at the 92.85 level, kind of just in somewhat of a sideways chop range in the overnight session in London. Um, again, OPEC comes out and they don't make any adjustments to output. They keep it at 30 million barrels per day. And so OPEC, the meeting is already over, so don't worry about that anymore here. Is that to be a huge variable and everybody's sitting on hands because the meeting's done. They call out status quo on their outage right now, output, 30 million barrels per day. News also today that's going to be quite encouraging for us, at least that will move the dollar. And you know what? A very well missed defined trend on the dollar. Finally, risk on sentiment back into play. We saw it happen yesterday. And today we have the DXC up about 45 points or so this morning and we have your crude down by about 76 points. So you can see back on with this risk on sentiment. So we're going to be depending on this dollar index to definitely help us out with the direction of the dollar, I mean with the direction of the crude. Right, so products all trade positive territory as well and I have some levels for you guys in the products which we'll review. But most importantly here we're going to be watching our Bob, our leader today, heating oil and crude are laggers. We're watching, like I mentioned, open interest decreasing in all three major markets here for the energies, so we will be watching for bullish activity. Again, in the options in the crude pit yesterday, they pegged that $95 level like a, like a, you know, they really want that, they really want that level for those weekly options. So locals especially, they want that 95 bucks, and they uh, buy the 95 call, they buy the 93 half calls as well, and for them to be into the money, they got to get up to 95. So. Very simply put it that way. All right, so crude trading at the 92.80s. Your RBOB trading at the 279 half level down about a penny and a quarter today. Just watching levels of support on that RBOB 279, 20, 279, 10, and 279. Even again, those are your support coming into it really closely and real fast here. So again, he's going to be our leader today. We want to keep an eye on that with the open interest 100,221, implied volatility 21.5%. Looking over at your heating oil, 282.66 is trading one and three quarters penny lower on the day as we're watching this heating oil run into some support as well as the crude and also our RBOB. So we, it's making sense here for us to go down just a bit, bounce off of our lows, and we'll be back in business. Open interest on the heating oil trades just about 104,734. Implied volatility, 21.5%. Brent crude holding levels of 101.5 right now. Brent is slightly in the negative today in the red, but the European session brought a little uncertainty as they were waiting for that OPEC meeting to finish up. And now, finally, that they're finished up, traders will be getting back to their desks and they'll be trading that uh, the Brent and the crude in the U.S. Open here. So we should see some decent activity, again, along with the uh, 8.30 news, the 8.50, 8.45 news, and the 8.55 news today. Again, we have, um, we have consumer confidence and um, consumer spending and outlays so really income and outlays, how humans would say it, but they call it uh, consumer um, spending and outlays. So we'll be watching for those two news events today. Let's also just talk about the fact that we're, besides that dollar trading lower, Brent WTI spread rather tight back into the $8 handle here today. We're watching that Brent WTI spread in contango, guys, in a big way here. Again, it tightens up just by about, I would say, 25 cents or so down in the 8 handle, 877 on that Brent WTI spread. So we are going to be bullish due to that. Calendar spreads are very tight this morning as well. I'm looking at the, the uh, let's see, July to August, 14 cents. Wow, we haven't seen 14 cents in a while. July to Sept is just about 18 cents, and then your July to August, 25 cents. So in contangled, big time on all three of the major calendar spreads and also our Brent WTI spread. So we are bullish here again, um, big time here. Again, the pit has also been showing us some type of bullish sentiment as well. Keep in mind. We have our physical delivery buyers. Again, we have the cruise liners come in. They bought 6 million barrels yesterday in physical delivery buying. That's 6 million barrels they come in and, and uh, they take for physical delivery. So the average is 20 million. So I'll be watching, obviously, for today to see if those filling brokers, they get those 
uh, physical delivery um, orders to come in. Again, they, they're physical buyers. They're in the market for a while. So when they come in a buyer, they stay in a buyer. They don't come in a seller anymore. So again, we'll be keeping an eye for that. Six million so far off the board that they uh, are taking for delivery. And we're going to have to watch out and see how much more they take today. And then obviously jet fuel buying the first week of the month. So we'll be watching for that. That's why we also have a slightly bullish tone. As you can see yesterday, they pushed down prices and they come right back in. Heavy bid. They buy, it's like I mentioned, 6 million barrels. Let's talk about some levels here this morning as we're going to wrap this one on up again. Looking at yesterday's pit session level, we had a high at 93.99, a low down at 91.65. We end up closing and settling the day at 93.66. Quite near our high prints of the day. Open interest is obviously decreased now, as I mentioned. That number on there was uh, yesterday's open interest. Just I like to put that one up there, so then when I tell you this one in the morning, you can see the difference between. So open interest this morning, like I mentioned, is at 299,465. So look at the difference, 10,000 contracts from yesterday. So that's big. Lower by when we get squeezed out, 10,000 contracts. It's very bullish. Um, today, daily pivot 93.10, resistance above. Of course, that 94 even, 94.55, 95.44, and 97.78. Again, 94 even, 95, 94 even, 94.55, 95.44, and 97.78. Support down below, 92.21, 91.61, and 90.76. Of course, that low involved there, 91.65 as well. We don't want to forget about that. Yesterday, we had a range of about $2.35 with a dollar attributing to about $1.50 of that range and the rest is supply and demand. We also saw a net change on the crude of about $1.32 in the pit session. Implied volatility was holding steady around 24%, now ticking down to 23%. The OVX still above 24 bucks even. Like I mentioned, that 95 call, 10,000 calls were bought yesterday, as opposed to those 90 and 84 puts. The 90 and 84 puts traded 1,000 times each, so you can see huge call buying, at least 10 to 1 on SKU. And as I mentioned, that open interest in that $95 level is big, too. Let's talk about natural gas real quickly. We had inventories yesterday, and we did get, uh, get beaten down on the chin yesterday on the, with those inventory numbers. Um, you can see we end up closing and settling the day at 402.10, which is a level we haven't seen in a while. So let's talk about some downside first. Okay, so we're talking about 4 bucks and 390 If we break below 4 bucks, we'll be down at 390 on the natural gas. It's really simple. Again, the only reason why we traded lower yesterday was because of the building inventories that we got. So if you rode the train lower, uh, you can continue on. I don't think it's going to you know, you know, bounce up too high here. We're going to retrace just a bit as normally as always the case, and then we're going to keep on going lower. So watch that $4 level. That's what I mean by keep on going lower. Uh, if we bounce off of 4 bucks, then be a buyer. If not, be a seller here because the options are telling us below that $4 level, they're looking at 370 So there's no buying pressure until you hit 370 But again, 390 is a technical level, so I'm not going to be that um, bearish on the product until we can, until it shows itself and it breaks below these key levels that we've been watching for the last couple of days. Right now, the natural gas trades at 403 half. Implied volatility is 30.5% here. Uh, it's 33%, sorry. And open interest currently stands at 200 and. 94,481 compared to yesterday, 307, 307, uh, 307,025. Look over at your uh, pit session high low and the range associated with yesterday's trade, a 16 penny range. Yesterday's high was 417.40, your low was 411.80. We closed and settled the day at 402.1. Daily pivot today, 406.90, which we are trading well below right now. Uh, I want to focus on the support below and then we'll talk about resistance to support below. 396.40, 390.60, that's a very important level right there, that second level, I can't tell you how important that is. And then that 374.30 is going to be your third level of support down there, and that's very realistic to get down to, guys, if we could break below the $4 level. So the options, they want those 370s really badly, they want the 390s, and they want the 4 evens, so uh, you can't fight with these guys. You know, they're, they have more money than us. I mean, we have to just follow the elephant in the room. All right, uh, resistance above 412.70, 423.20, and 435 half. So we will continue to keep an eye here on uh, the rest of our products here that are trading this morning. Again, I'll be with you guys in just less than an hour, um, and we're ready to rock and roll on our Friday, summertime Friday again. So we should see some guys sneak out of here early. I'm thinking, so be prepared for that afternoon. But like I mentioned, uh, we do have OPEC done with their meeting. We have OPEC now keeping their outage at the same level unchanged, status quo, 30 million barrels per day. So that is promising that we won't have to worry about now 
uh, that meeting summing up and running your trading because it's already done. So, all right, I'll see you guys later. Marty, thank you so much, my friend. As always, thanks for coming out and joining us today. Thanks for braving the elements down there in the NYMEX exchange. That was Marty Errico from Traders Audio. Marty's got a great broadcast. Him and Jeffrey do a great job every morning starting at 8.50, 10 minutes before the opening bell on the NYMEX exchange. They do broadcasts for both crude oil, uh, for both futures and options, and they also broadcast for natural gas as well. Once again, my name is Joseph James. I'm JJ at School of Trade. That was Marty at Traders Audio. Uh, every morning, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we do a very unique morning prep. We go from Los Angeles to New York City, going from the screen to the floor. And I hope this morning we've given you a little bit of confidence in your trading. I hope we've sparked some ideas in your trading. I want to encourage you to be patient this morning because we do know it's the end of the month. And we know at the end of the month people do crazy things, don't they? As we always talk about in our trade room, the end of the month is usually the time when we see the Hail Mary trades. The, my client's going to drop me if I, don't trade, if I don't take this trade, right? My boss is going to fire me if I don't get out of this position trade. Or the, I'm down for the month, I've got I've to try something to make my numbers look good for the end of the month, right? All of, those, all of those factors are coming in, and then Marty talks about cruise liners, airliners, shipping companies, right? Big consumers of crude oil, and of course, all the speculators into the market at the end of the month. We know to expect a busy day here with crude oil. Be careful out there, and remember, I'll have all the charts updated on the blog here in about 30 seconds' time. Have yourself a great day out there. Remember to learn it first so you can earn it. We'll see you next time, folks. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.